Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope because it's your life. So live it. Today, we have a dialogue with someone I have not talked to before and someone who, who did make his transition in 2018. So pretty recent. And I felt like it was a good time to connect with him because I kept seeing his face. I kept seeing his image, not external, but in my mind's eye or in my clairvoyance, which is the third eye. And so I thought it would be a good time to do that. So today we're going to talk with Anthony Bourdain. So what does Bridget know about Anthony Bourdain? I'd like to give you that up front so you have an idea so you can see the conversation unfold authentically. So I know that he committed suicide. I know that he struggled with some kind of addictions. I think that was, I think that was something that was public. And I know that he has one child. I think he has one child and that he was on a food guy. He was like on a, the food programs and TV and stuff. So that's what I know about him. So let's get to know him a little bit more, shall we? All right, so Anthony, come on in. He says right away, my friends call me Tony. You can call me Tony, which is good. All right, thank you. Yeah, Tony, that's great. Um, he seems kind of serious. I can see him, you know, with his like gray hair, a little spiky and he actually has glasses on. And it's a kind of interesting because they look like they're too, they have a purpose, uh, like glasses with a purpose. Um, like they look like reading glasses kind of a thing or glasses to help you see better. But they also look like they're the kind of glasses that have almost transition lenses. Like if you go into a bright place, they transition. I don't know what the deal is with the special glasses, but he's got some special glasses on. So, hey, there you go. And um, so Anthony, okay, or Tony, I'm sorry, because you said I can call you Tony. Can you share with us a little bit about what it's like in the afterlife? You're a new arrival over there, over there. And so can you talk to us a little bit about that? That would be insightful for us to learn from you, from that experience. <clears throat> he says, sure. And it looks like he's sitting on a stool, just so you guys know, with kind of one foot down, one foot up, almost like a stool, like at a... Uh, uh, an eating establishment kind of a thing and uh, he says sure sure I can do that talk to you about that um, he says well you know I you know I killed myself you know that and I had been thinking about that for a long time to be honest with you I've been thinking about that a long time I came close to pulling the trigger multiple times earlier on in my life, you know, I had some down downturns, but, and I didn't hide that. Like, I'm not ashamed of the person that I am, you know, that I, that I, I was, but the life that I lived, I know could have been better. I could have, I could have done better. I mean, I had lots of opportunities that other people didn't have, you know, um, my heart was in writing. If I'm going to, going to be, um, if I want you to know me, my heart was in writing. I love to write. And that was important to me. And I never really got a chance to, you know, publish anything really great, you know. And that's one thing that I feel like when you, when you leave the body and you recognize that, whoa, I'm here, you know. Wow, okay, so this is, this is the, big, the big light thing. And you realize, well, wait, wait, that's done then. Like scene, cut, end, end of movie, it's done. Then you, you, you do have this chance to kind of look back at that, to look, look down on your life because that's, how, that's really how it feels. It feels like you're looking down over the course of what seemed like years and and the times that were bad just seemed like to go on forever. And the times that were good seemed so short, you know. And looking down at life, and life itself, life is short. That's the one thing I would want to tell people. Life is short. Your life is short. Go out and have your experiences. Go out on your grand adventures. Try things that get you out of your tiny little 
little box of a house or of a life and, and, and do something, see the world, do that. That's what I would say. Uh, that's what I would want people to know. You don't want to, if you, if people really realized how brief your time is, you would live differently. Yes. Okay. Wow. Um, Tony, are you related to any motivational speakers? I mean, like really intense, like really to the point, really. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for that. Can you talk a little bit about the actual transitioning part? So at the point where you're a person, you're a guy, you know, you're Anthony Bourdain, the food guy, you know, the traveling food guy. Let me just say that. He said, you know, it was more about the travel. He says, you know that, right? It's more about the travel, like getting welcome into people's homes and having these experiences where you're in these foreign lands and, and you just, there's all this, this stimulus, you know, the smells and the colors and the people and the stories. And it's just, it's just so the traveling part, you know, it's about that, you know, it's about that. Okay. No, I didn't know that. I kind of thought you were a food guy and you just happened to travel. So you're telling me that the travel is a huge part and that's kind of the explorer adventure kind of piece. Yeah, absolutely. So talk to me about the transition because a lot of people that are going to be watching at Above Life Channel will be curious, uh, Tony, how, how, what that's like. Because, you know, do you, I mean, remember when you were a guy, you would want to know this too. You would ask. You would be curious. You would say, hey, so what did it feel like? Did you feel anything? What was it, what was it about? Did, did relatives greet you or what? He says, it's funny you should ask that. He says, I had a brother that died young. Okay, so a brother or someone that felt like a brother. It's weird because I see two young men in a picture. I see one taller than the other, and one of them isn't there anymore. But it seems like the older one isn't there anymore, and the younger one is. Is the younger one you? Yes. He said, yeah. Yes. And he greeted me. He was there. And... And you know, you know it's not just a place, he says. You know, you know, it's, it's not a place. There really isn't like a heaven and an earth. I mean, there is in your mind because earth is a body, human life body, and heaven is spirit, nobody. So I guess, you know, yeah, there is, but it's not a place. It's not like moving to Toledo. It's not like that. And you, you know that, you know that. But I'm saying it for the, for the people who are watching, for the viewers. They, they need to understand that. You're absolutely right. Yes, they do. Thank you. So talk more. Talk about what it felt like for you at the moment of your death. In particular, do you think it was different for you because you chose, you committed suicide? So do you think it was different versus like maybe natural causes kind of a thing? Like talk about that a little bit. He says... Yeah, you really get to it, don't you? You just cut right to it and go right with the hard questions. Get right to the core. I like that. I like that up front kind of attitude. I like that kind of initiative. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Anthony. All right. Tony, Tony. Okay, Tony. All right, Tony. <laughs> all right. So talk to me seriously now. We're not going to avoid this. Okay. He said, all right. All right, all right. Yeah, he said, all right. Well, it's not an easy thing getting to that point to make that decision. And it's not something I would recommend to anyone. It's, it, it's, it's difficult for me to share this, to say this. Because as you know, it was, re it was relatively recent in the human calendar and context of time. It's hard for me to say this because I don't want you to get the wrong impression as you're watching about the afterlife or about God or creator, whatever your belief is in that higher power part. 
But you should know that for a moment when I let go, really let go of life as a body, and I, it was almost instantly, it was like taking the sheet off the bed and getting out of bed. And you know how that is, like if you, particularly if you live in a colder climate or if the windows open in the, the apartment and you get out of bed and it's cold and your feet hit the ground and it's cold and you're like, oh, cold. That's how it felt. That's the best analogy I could, the scenario I could describe to you. So the moment that I, I made that choice and I slipped through that sheet and into the cold of what comes next. And it was cold. I felt really cold, really cold. And I know that doesn't really make sense because there's no body. How can you feel cold? But you got to understand when you commit suicide, when you do the, when you do a self inflicted, I'm going to use the word murder. I know that's not going to be real popular with some of your viewers, he says. But when you, when you choose to inflict murder upon yourself or your body, you murder your body because that's what you did. That's what you did. That's what I did. That's what you did. There's this coldness that happens immediately after. And I'm not saying this because I want to persuade you not to do it. And I don't want you to feel bad if you have loved ones, relatives, and people that you care about who did commit suicide and who are in the afterlife. I'm just sharing with you one guy's experience. You know, Tony's experience. This is what I felt. It felt real cold. It felt cold. It wasn't what I thought it would be. But, but I'm not tortured. You can ask Bridget. He says, you can ask Bridget. I'm not tortured. I don't feel, I don't feel um, intense heaviness and not drag and chains and moaning and uh, haunting anybody or anything like that. I'm not doing that. That's not, I'm not, I'm not being punished. There's no guy behind a bench, you know, like night court where they're like telling you, this is your judgment. This is your, this is your punishment. It's not like that. It's not like that. The, the worst thing for me, it's the connection I still have to what you would consider ego mind, the mind. So when I chose to stop my life as a person in a body, I didn't realize that I was also choosing to continue my on my path of development personal development and growth so every time i went to i got help for addiction my addiction i and i would do well for a while or i could do rehab or i'd quit cold turkey and i'd be good for a while and then i but then i'd fall back in and go back into this the cycle that was heavy you know, it felt so heavy, like I'm carrying heavy bags and I can't set them down, like multiple backpacks on both arms and just really shoulder pushing down on me. I didn't realize that I was, I was still going to, I wasn't going to be free from that. It's, it's, it's difficult to explain this to you, but I still have a connection to my mind in a way that the ego creates a like a bubble or a pressure of energy, like a buildup of energy, like a buildup. And what's in those bags, I still have that in part. It's, but it's not, it's not, I don't want people to get the wrong idea here. I don't want people to get the wrong idea here. That's what he's saying. It's not like you're forced to carry with you all the pain and suffering from your human life. But I also got to be clear, it's not like it was gone in a second. There is a moment of separation and an immediate release from the pain for me. 
and everything was cold. And then there was nothing, nothing. There was no feeling. And it reminded me of that addiction. When you're numb, just numb, and there's nothing. And all you want is to feel something, something. Even, maybe even if it's kind of bad, you want to feel something. And you don't. You just don't. There's none of that. There's none of that. I think this might be why, maybe, I don't know if I can speak for you. This is him speaking. He's saying this. If I can speak for you, Bridget, why you didn't want to interview me. Because it's complicated. Because the way that we experience afterlife as a spirit, that's what you say. You use the word spirit. I still don't see myself as a spirit. That's not necessarily the word I would use. But I'm not stuck either. I'm not one of those spirits that I said, like I said, is haunting or stuck on earth or anything. But I have things I have to clear up for myself. And so it's kind of like I'm going through rehab in a way. But this time, this time, I just chose to do it over here in this space that's hard to describe to you what this space is. And, and, and I don't have words because words don't work to describe that. And I do not recommend experiencing it for yourself. I, I cannot recommend that. Nope. No. Hmm. Profound. Now I know why I needed to talk to you, Tony. <laughs> wow. There, I have so many follow-up questions I want to ask you, so many things I want to ask you about. Um, the complexity of your experience transitioning is fascinating to me. And I really appreciate you sharing as best you could in human words and context that we can under, we as watchers, you know, as viewers can understand. But the big takeaway that I got from you, from what you described about your transition into the afterlife is that it's unique and that is consistent. It is unique and original to the person based on your beliefs, based on your expectations, based on what you want to do, because it feels like you didn't accomplish what you set out in life to accomplish because of the addiction piece that it was distracting you and sidetracking you, taking you off your course. And that just happened one too many times and you just were done with it. It's how it feels like you're like, okay, I'm done. I can, I'm done. And that because of that, there's still this kind of energy, this, this opportunity of personal development, which is kind of ironic because it, person and you're not even a person anymore but you're having a development piece you're like a like an ascension or an evolution like an ascension like you're um, transcending and you're learning and growing as as a energy and that that you have to clear that some of that energy but that it's not this painful suffering process like that you maybe have experienced on your with a body but you're doing it in a different way that's more of a mental almost if we were going to attach what you're describing to the human experience, I would attach it instead of like addiction or illness, disease to the physical body, I would attach it to your, the mental, the mind. And that's the interesting, that's such an interesting, um, interesting thing that you brought up there. I mean, it, it's complex. There's a lot of things we could explore there. And I'm thinking, have you met Wayne Dyer? Because he's all about that understanding the mind and the thoughts and the ego mind. In the afterlife, he said, yeah, I think, I believe, yes, I believe I've met him. But he's not one of your coaches, right? <laughs> he's like, no, not yet. <laughs> he's like, no, no. But I could have, you know, I could have a beer with him. I could easily have a beer. Well, you can't technically because he didn't drink, but, you know. He's like, no, but I could talk to him, yeah. All right. Um, I just talked to him last week. That's what I was thinking. Um, so... Wow, I don't even, I'm like, you kind of blew my mind with your description and the information that you shared. I mean, you really did blow my mind. It's fascinating to me. It's really interesting. It's really interesting.
Um, and I want to ask you more things too, like tell me more about the ego mind part, but I feel like you're not a lot far enough along in the process to be able to really, for you to give me the information energetically and for me to explain it would be better, but you can't do that. You're very tangible to me. Like you're able to really connect with a human experience expression right now. And I don't know if it's because it's so soon after you died or if it's, um, it's only like a month or so, I think, uh, since you've died six weeks, it feels like maybe. It's October, mid-October, um, or eight weeks. Maybe it's eight weeks. It might be eight weeks. You, um, you feel really tangible. So at some point, I'd like to revisit, maybe chat with you a little bit more as you're progressing and moving along the ascension kind of process and becoming more fully, what I would say, spirit, but you're not using that word. You're not using that term. So I want to be clear on that to who's watching. But, um, and I want to talk to you about loved ones and people you left here and how that works and all that stuff too. But So let's ask the viewers. So... Viewers, this has been an interview with Anthony Bourdain, Tony, to his friends. He's like, yeah, yeah. Um, big smile, by the way. He has a big smile. He opens his mouth a lot when he smiles, like, like that kind of thing. Like, you know, very expressive in his face. Um, he has eyes that really say a lot. Let's say that. Um, interesting, very interesting energy. But viewers, do you have questions for Anthony too, you know, for Tony? Do you have things that you would like to ask him that you're curious about um, regarding his death, regarding his life, regarding the afterlife, whatever? Go ahead and put them in the comments below so we can have that. So if we do have a future conversation, then, I mean, it'd be interesting to do it like a year out, you know, to see kind of what has evolved and what has changed. Make sure you put those comments though below because I will refer back to those if I do another video with him. So make sure you write them below. If you liked this dialogue with Anthony Bourdain in the afterlife here at Above Life Channel, make sure that you give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and do not forget to subscribe. So click the red bell button so you never miss a new weekly channel. This is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Thank you so much for watching today. Remember, the purpose here is to inspire your spirit, and I hope we did that today. This is your life, so live it. Thanks for watching.